So welcome to today's Tuesday talk on the just energy transition debate in Brazil and Germany through an intersectional lens. Which civil society groups are addressing just transition and what do they mean by it? By our fellow Isadora Cardoso. Isadora joined the Institute a few months ago and will stay with us until 2022. She has a disciplinary background in globalization and development studies, and she has been working particularly on gender and climate justice over the past five years, among others in Brazil, Germany, and the Netherlands. And prior to joining the ISS, she has been working for the NGO Gender CC, Women for Climate Justice in Berlin. And before we start, just keep in mind, please, that the session will be recorded. And now, Isadora, please. Thank you, Ahim, and also thank you, Aneta, for uh, organizing this and for everyone who joined the session. I'm going to, um, as usual, and just to make it a little bit more interesting than just seeing my face, uh, share a screen, share my presentation, <laughs> where I put some of the notes which will guide it. Um, so. Please let me know if you can see the screen. Okay. And can you also see your, like you can see this, this, um, the Zoom, uh, your face is here in the Zoom or is it just me who see it? You also yes. see? We can see ourselves, yes. Okay. okay, I will keep it like this because then I can see a little bit of you. Okay, so um, thank you so much for joining this. Uh, today I'm gonna, um, just repeat a little bit and introduce myself um, again um, um, after what Ahim already said. So I'm Isadora, I've been working with uh, gender and um, climate issues for some years now. Um, so um, I've started my, um, I've started my professional career um, working with the Sustainable Development Goals or the 2030 Agenda when I was still in Brazil. And uh, since then I have been uh, like focusing more and like knowing, like working more on issues of climate change and gender issues uh, when I started having this more. So first I started with working with all the, all the issues in the 2030 agenda. And after my experience in Brazil and working in the development sector, I, um, I did a master's degree and then started working at this NGO, uh, Gender CC, Women for Climate Justice, where I saw that the issue of climate and gender issues um, were really what interested me in, in terms of, um, yeah, so to explore how it, how it really works in the practice. And also, um, yeah, so I started to work uh, with it uh, in an, from an NGO perspective by implementing projects, but also since my uh, master's degree, I've also been uh, concerned uh, about this interrelated topics in more theoretical terms. And here at the IESS, um, I started this fellowship in May and I wanted to do, um, I wanted to come back to a more, um, uh, yeah, like an academic or a, a space where I could um, think about the issues that I was working on in my um, in my NGO life before. Um, certain issues were more um, urgent in my mind and more and were interesting were interest were interesting to me more than just climate and gender broadly. And one of them um, that after like some three years um, uh, accompanying, for example, the climate negotiations and climate uh, issues in my work, one of the issues that I was really interested to know more and also that I found very urgent to like think about and address was the topic of uh, energy transition. Um, we, um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go slowly because I put this all in the presentation, but just to let, just to give you an idea of how I came to this uh, interest topic in, in um, in my uh, in my trajectory, and so I have been also um, uh, as my background is in political science, but also always have been interested in working on feminist issues and gender issues. This um, is something that always accompanies my work. Uh, whenever I talk about, whenever I'm interested in work, or whenever I'm working on a climate, uh, any climate um, topics. 
I take it from a social uh, gender or intersectional perspective, which is mostly what I've been um, what I've been um, interested in developing the last years of my work, and therefore I'm also taking this up in this uh, fellowship here. Um, so I am. Um, I am originally from Brazil and I'm living in Germany. And so I already give you some hints that um, why this interest and why this question is what, um, what I'm putting, uh, uh, what I'm like focusing on in this, uh, in this uh, work at the IASS. Uh, this is important for me to just um, let you know how I came to how this interest come because I also, it's important for me to position myself in this research and to make clear what are my interests, where I speak from, and that those interests don't come from nowhere and that I don't, um, that I have a real, a, a neutral stake whenever I, I research the things that I research. Um, and so I'm gonna go to the next slide just to present you with my, um, okay, I don't wanna see my face, so I'm gonna see Ahim's face <laughs> while I'm speaking. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm gonna start by introducing you my research questions and I could, and then I go um, deeper on the, on the, the, I go back to the, to the, to the issues that I'm approaching in this research. So what I want to, what I'm interested uh, in this uh, now in my life and also in this work now is to see what are the main um, civil society groups um, which are working on just energy transition in both countries, Brazil and Germany. Um, why civil society groups? Because um, historically they have been um, the ones, well, they have the trade unions and uh, let's say civil society, broadly speaking, they have been the, they have been the ones who have been pushing for this agenda uh, first and foremost. Um, we know that nowadays there are many groups which are approaching and working on it, not only within civil society. We know that government and also uh, the philanthropic sector or um, the private sector is also interested in. Um, in debating and um, joining forces for making the energy transition fair and, um, and benefiting people and the communities affected by especially energy industries. But my focus here also comes from my background uh, where, in, where I've been more close, um, re closely researching civil society and social movements since my bachelor's and also involved in some of these groups um, as a, a climate um, and feminist activist throughout my last years. Therefore, um, I'm interested in knowing which are these groups um, in this sector specifically, um, because I know that they, uh, so because um, there, I know that there are many of them in both countries. Um, I don't know exactly how big this, or how big the, the scene of the groups in both countries are and therefore my question I want to know uh, what are these groups and um, and what are they um, working on when they are approaching just transition or when they're pushing for just transition their respective contexts um, so this is the first question will be will lead me to a more descriptive kind of result or uh, work I'm gonna try to do this by mapping these groups um, through my networks and through also, let's say, the networks of my colleagues at the IESS, the networks of colleagues in other collectives that I'm part of. So by really identifying the civil society groups uh, which are working on this, uh, on this agenda, I aim to contribute to like not only raising more awareness on the issue of just transition, but also to make it a, a more like to to see how how different the debate is and how the debate is differently approached right by by these groups and who are these groups of course so identifying is an important um it can be in my view an important means for these groups themselves to know each other and to um strengthen coalition in a time where climate action is very urgent um 
Then um, after this more descriptive work, I'm gonna be like asking those groups um, through online means mainly, um, what do they mean by just transition or what is, is their take on just transition? Because I'm assuming that there are many different um, approaches and there is a lot of literature which already like, comp which already uh, categorizes different um, just transition approaches uh, within civil society. And so I am going to exactly uh, ask those questions to these groups in those countries. What are, um, what do they mean or what, what should be, yeah. And then the next question would be, what would be the justice approach? And for example, what would be the groups um, that they think should be most, uh, what are the groups that they, um, that they prioritize, prioritize when they um, when they take this justice approach, because a justice approach is in the end also a, a lot about um, reparation, is a lot about this distribution or redistribution of benefit benefits, but also costs. It's about um, compensation of um, of um, let's say losses or for certain groups or for more marginalized groups, which are disproportionately affected by un some, some issues. So when we talk about justice, it's um, the framework of justice. Um, we'll look into this, into what are the groups that these groups, that the civil society um, organizations that I'm gonna talk to, which groups are they prioritizing and why? Why is that that, for example, for some might be that, um, the workers in the, the region is, um, is, is the group that they think should be um, benefiting the most from a just transition um, plan, for example. And so these are my main questions um, and they will orient all my, um, all my work. And with the two last questions, I, I intend to have, of course, a more analytical, um, 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 anal a more analytical take in my research. So first I'm gonna descri describe and like identify the groups and then I aim to discuss and to, uh, to see what are the, the, the different approaches to just transition. Um, I'm gonna start by, um, by asking some basic questions again to just like justify how I came here, how I came to these questions, how this interest um, is now in my uh, research. Um, so I think I'm assuming that uh, we all have this, we all, we all have a common understanding that climate action and um, also um, the need for, um, the need for like um, stopping, um, um, like a climate action towards uh, zero carbon emission reality is a need and is an urgent need. We don't have, we have a lot of evidence, um, for example, this last um, assessment report or working group assessment report by the IPCC, which showed us with more striking evidence, the likability of, um, of the, the, the chaotic scenarios, climate scenarios, if we don't move to a zero carbon um, reality um, soon or now. Therefore, um, the energy transition, I would, I would like, why do we need it? Because we don't have more time to not do it. And therefore, all the many of the plans that we have nowadays to, for example, sh uh, shift away from um, emitting sources of, uh, of greenhouse gases or to, um, or to balance um, the emissions uh, with some technical um, solutions, we know that this is uh, still not compatible with the with the uh, with the time that we that we need in order to avoid greater catastrophes. Therefore, um, it's it's I I I would like to say it's a given that we need to do it as soon as possible. Uh, but of course, there are so many issues to consider: social, economic, environmental issues we need to consider when we talk about this, and it takes a lot of planning and coordinated action. And therefore, I know that I'm not going to be able to address it in my research, um, but I just wanted to justify um, 
why we need it. And therefore, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to read this uh, citation of the IPCC report last, from last week. Um, or, yeah, from last week. Um, so the global surface temperature will continue to increase until at least the mid-century under all emission scenarios considered. Global warming of 1.5 degrees and 2, 2 degrees will be exceeded during the 21st century unless deep reductions in carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas emissions occur in the coming, coming decades. Um, so it's just a matter of just really looking at evidence um, and listen to the science and to the, and to the civil society group, many of the civil society groups um, uh, working with climate justice that we know that this is, um, that's, this is a, an urgent action for uh, countries to take in the energy transition, especially phasing out um, greenhouse gases um, sources in there and shifting to renewable energies sources. And why am I interested in, in why just transition, right? Um, because uh, among other uh, aspects, um, I take, as I said in the beginning, um, a, a more like whenever I talk, whenever I approach climate issues in my work, whenever I, I see uh, climate change, um, whenever I, I study it, I take it from um, more systemic or uh, a more I would call it already a more intersectional perspective where I'm interested in, for example, where I, I know that, for example, any climate action, including mitigation, nowadays it has to include um, social, environmental, economic aspects um, when, when, they're when, it's, uh, when the action is taken, right? We cannot, um, we cannot fix climate change by um, technical fixes. We cannot, fix, we cannot solve the climate crisis by only putting numbers to it or by only approaching it as a matter of reducing some numbers or divest, divest, making divestments. It's, all, it's a systemic issue and therefore it has to be approached in a very systematic way and systemic way. And it's, it's complex to do so, to work uh, with many disi disciplines at the same time, with different knowledges at the same time. But it's also um, a very important, um, it's very important for us if we want to take it as, um, as systemic as, as possible and in a way that addresses, um, addresses all the inequalities that it has already and, uh, um, and not to increase this inequalities further because we know that also these inequalities they come from um, systemic issues. Um, also um, well another point why just transition it's 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 become such a such a hot topic in the in many many contexts including the international um, negotiations on climate change most recently that it was um, not most recently, we, we also had just transition. Um, it was also a, a thing included um, since the Kyoto Protocol, but in the Paris Agreement, which is the agreement we have right now, so that countries are um, committed to, um, um, to each one have their own um, contributions to, 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 to curb the climate crisis. Um, it's included in the text of the Paris Agreement. Therefore, we have those that importance in this international agreement for countries to take action. Um, also, it's a it's a it's a topic which is in which has been gaining some prominence in the debate um, of civil society in the last years. And therefore, I'm interested in knowing what they um, um, why this this debate has increased and. Um, why is that? Uh, what are the different takes that nowadays we have uh, with in, with more evidence um, showing that climate action is more is urgent, right? And um, and also just transition as I as I said before, um, this different stakeholders or the different groups, even within civil society, they take it, they define it differently, and therefore I think it's important to have this. Um, have this heterogeneous uh, view um, 
even when I'm when I'm talking about civil society, because civil society is a very broad um, definition or can um, can include many different groups with sometimes opposing uh, interests. And um, so I'm gonna quickly just um, um, bring here a definition um, by the Research Institute on Social Development of the United Nations. Um, even though I know that it's a disputed <laughs> mean uh, a concept, I, I like this. I like this uh, this definition by the center because um, it says that the the idea. It says that just transition is this idea of justice, uh, that justice and equity must form an integral, integral part of the transition towards a low or zero carbon world. And it's increasingly being mobilized both to counter the jobs versus environment, environment binary and to broaden the debate on low carbon transitions. And while they recognize that employment is a source of human security and dignity, just transition debates also focus on a broader set of justice related issues, such as the kinds of jobs and societies that uh, we envision for the future. So I really, so the, this, this binary that they put here, I think it's, it's, it's something still very much in the debate, uh, jobs versus environment, but many, many groups, as far as my research um, has uh, found so far, many um, trade union groups, many um, grassroots groups, feminist groups have been approaching um, the just transition with a center, of course, in jobs and in quality jobs, but, um, but without making it a, a, a thing that would not go um, with, you know, environmental um, with environmental concerns. And therefore, this binary is something that um, maybe in the beginning of the debate on just transition has, has been hitting the, that has been a thing. But the more I research groups, the more I see that this is uh, also with the, with, with increased evidence on climate change. I think it's something that the, the groups, um, uh, the civil society groups have been trying to um, have been approaching differently. Um, and here I want to talk about, again, um, what is this intersectional approach that I'm going to take uh, when, whenever I do the mapping of the groups, of the civil society groups in both countries, and whenever I want, whenever I ask them what they mean by justice and what is just transition in their context, right? Um, so for those who don't know, intersectionality is a means is a tool uh, for us, for people to see different systems um, of inequality, systems of oppression, different aspects that, um, that can intersect or overlap or um, come together in a certain context and put people in more or less uh, disadvantaged positions, uh, depending on the context. And there are times, for example, where racial issues or origin issues are more, they are more um, relevant for, um, for knowing what are the, you know, the inequality or disadvantage that certain groups leave than, for example, um, gender issues. And therefore, the intersectional approach that I take here, the, this will help me um, see and come from a, from, come from a view where I, where I plan to see, where I want to see um, what are these different uh, justice approaches that the groups have. Therefore, I don't want to have like, I don't want to take a normative approach when I talk about justice or when I look at the way that the groups approach justice in their work or just transition. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to come with, um, uh, I don't want to, I don't have already what is the best way to approach just transition or to approach justice in the context of energy transition, um, but rather to try to understand according to the different sectors of these groups or the di different levels where they work, if they're more grassroots or you know a nation, national group, and also depending on the context where, where they are if in Brazil or in Germany, I wanna see what are, let's say, the this um, the systems or what are the these aspects that are more important when they claim for justice? So the aspect of um, 
of income is more important or the aspect of um, of the territories the territories where the groups are is more important this is also um, something that an intersectional approach will help me see um, therefore i'm not gonna i, I don't want to see um, i don't want to come with um, uh, as i said before i don't want to come with looking at ju just gender issues uh, because i think sometimes um, uh, sometimes some other aspects are more relevant for the groups than others. And this is a thing that people sometimes ask me like, oh, you're gonna look at the women and the men and you're gonna look at the gender issues. So when I take an intersectional approach, of course I'm, I'm, I'm interested in all the unequal relations and unequal systems that operate in, in such, in the realities that, that I look at, but it's more about trying to do it in an empirical way so that I see what is more relevant for the groups and also questioning why the absence of certain categories or certain um, systems or aspects um, is, is a thing. Why do, in case they don't approach, for example, gender issues, why is that, right? And so, and last, um, I'm gonna just quickly say um, why I chose again, <laughs> Why I, why I chose to compare these two countries. So in the end, my idea is to, is to create like a map, a visual map where I can see, where people could see um, um, the groups working in both countries, uh, the, the civil society groups, which work on both countries on, on just transition and a short definition by these groups on what they mean by just transition. And, um, and so the justificate, the, the, why I'm doing, so I'm gonna do this mapping, but I also want to put these countries in relation in a sense that I wanna see how um, in the global energy, let's say market or in the, in the globalized relations um, that we have, how these two countries relate in terms of energy, what, what kind of technologies they exchange, what kind of um, uh, also um, uh, raw materials they exchange in the sector of energy. So I'm going to put them in relation as well, not only by comparing them um, um, in separate. Um, in the end, I also, so I'm, I brought some data here on, on, on the two countries. And I think they, from the beginning, I can see they have a very different um, a reality in terms of energy, um, energy realities or energy pathways. Um, and I think it's it's been very interesting to um, to research Brazil from afar while being in Germany. Um, and here I have much more contact contact with uh, civil society groups working, for example, for the phase out of um, coal in the country in Germany. And so I think it's very interesting for me to uh, like while still keeping um, an eye in Brazil and having contacts and relations. Uh, with the movements there, um, being a Brazilian sitting here and having some contact also with with the groups in Germany, um, I will try. Yeah, I will try to make this comparison also a relation, like to put them in relation uh, in, in in a certain way. And in the end, my idea. So I told you already. This is the last. Uh, yeah, no, this is not the last, but I'm I'm almost finishing. I think. Um, I'm gonna, so I, 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 this is just a roadmap of my research here. And um, I'm gonna do, I can talk about it later if you have any questions about the methodology and how I plan to analyze the work. Um, but basically the final, uh, what, I, what I want to have is a final um, map of these countries, uh, as I said, when, where I can identify some of the groups and present like the idea would be to benefit this very groups, uh, civil society groups, but maybe also governmental actors can benefit from knowing which are the groups shaping this agenda in both countries. Um, and I plan to do so not only by launching this map, but also um, in a discussion in the, the last month of my, of my fellowship here. And I have some expected findings already. Um, in my mind and by also in, in my research and also by uh, talking with some groups, especially here from Germany. Um, but 
this is really simple. I can only say, repeat some of them. Um, this is that the debate is still very much alive and in dispute even within uh, civil society groups um, in both countries and in any countries, I would say. Um, also the politics of both countries nowadays present very challenges, but also some opportunities for the just transition to happen in the coming, coming um, decades, I would say. And um, also, I think the issue of work is something that I really would like to also from a feminist perspective approach in this research and how the just transition can be is some just some groups working on just transition are taking um, a more transformative approaches um, and re re on like by reframing or resignifying re like um, reimagining let's say um, the idea of work that we have, that we have nowadays in our in our societies um, so this is something that I'm starting to think now um, as I'm as I go along the research uh, but I would like to yeah I would like to um, delve into more uh, in the analysis and that's it I would love to hear some comments and also questions. I wasn't really able to go through all the slides, uh, all the details in the slides as I wanted, but I hope we can have more time now for, for questions and comments. Thank you very much, Isadora. And I would directly would like to take you up on your invitation and ask the group who is present um, who would like to start us with a discussion or comment? Otherwise, I would start myself, actually. In that case, I will start myself. Um, just as a question, what you mentioned... Um, ah, Luisa, you have been... No, please. no, but please, uh, you first, and then I ask. No problem. Okay. Um, Isadora, you mentioned on your last slide that the justice approaches varies between and within the two countries. Could you just give us a short so idea how they vary between the countries and within? Where do you see is the greatest contrast between the two countries from, from your current perspective? Yeah, I think it's a, well, yeah, I think um, when I was, when I put that in the slide, it was more about the um, approaches um, of the groups, right? I'm not saying like the approach of justice in Germany is a different than in Brazil, because this would be too much for me to say. Um, even though I have some some personal um, um, point of views in that in that sense, uh, but the but these two countries are very uh, different in terms of historical um, um, in terms of history and so many other things, geography, and so when when I put it there, it was more like that. I expect to uh, find these different approaches to justice, um, not only, um, um, yeah, not only uh, like by the, the very groups that work on just transition. And I think maybe, um, yeah, I, I, I have to think a little bit more about that, but I think in, it's, it's really not only, um, well, the issue about the, so trade unions have been really um, um, vocal and really a strong part of this of the movement for just transition in both countries, and um, I see that there is there is a, a lot of uh, debate on gender and racial issues in Brazil um, by these groups by trade unions, um, and I, I I I do expect to have this. Um, this uh, concerns more, um, more, yeah, like to more uh, stressed whenever I go deeper into the analysis. Um, here in Germany, the movements that I've and the groups that I've been uh, looking at, I, I do see that. I, I don't, I, I don't quite see um, issues of, as I said, gender and and race being so much uh, approached. Um, but I do, um, but it's, it, 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 it exists. I've been, I've, I've seen that. And therefore that's why I want to include those different debates and those different approaches in my mapping. 
because it's not a matter of um, uh, maybe the difference is bigger when I do the the overall mapping, um, and 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 I can see what is more uh, striking in some context than in in, in the other. Um, but I can, but there are a few groups already in both countries which are taking up this more um, um, this concerns um, of including, you know, not only the workers' uh, um, perspectives and interests, and, and but also indigenous peoples' interests, or and also um, women's, or you know, the the women who were um, like traditionally um, taking care of the households where. The men were working in the in the industries. So all those things that I see growing in the debate, uh, but so far I cannot. Um, so it varies varies the the approaches, but I would say I cannot I cannot say what are the biggest difference so far in what the groups um, uh, what what these groups approach uh, in how they approach it. Yeah, I hope I was a bit clear in, in, in yeah i mean you're still in the beginning actually of your work so it was just interested if you already found the big thing which would be the big difference um yeah. but now luisa please okay okay uh thank you uh congratulations Isadora, for the presentation first of all uh it was very interesting for me uh, and my question is uh, regarding the results that you are expecting. So mm -hmm. you said that uh, you will map and analyze these um, different actors uh, that are engaged with the just energy transitions, okay? And then I would like to know about your expectation in terms of how, it, how those different groups are in terms of uh, geographic distribution in Brazil, if you have an idea of how they are uh, distribution uh, through the territory, and an idea of how, how many different groups are you expecting? I mean, numbers of in Brazil and in Germany. Okay. I have the impression that there, there are many, many groups by talking, for example, with the, with, because the, when I, this was actually one of the first questions Ahim opposed me when I presented this uh, idea for him. He was like, okay, well, what do you mean by civil society, right? It can be such a broad thing to approach, to look at, in, at to, into civil society. And therefore, depending on my, um, on my take, I might have to, I might identify from grassroots groups um, really working in their, in their you know, territories to um, national coalitions or even international NGOs working at the national level. For example, Greenpeace, I know that it's a big, big player in when it comes to energy issues in both countries. And so I think I want to include from the very local to the very, I would even include international NGOs or international movements working on the agenda in, in these countries. Um, and so it's really hard to say how, how many groups and I don't I don't aim to have like it as an exhaustive um, research I, I'm sure that I will miss a lot in terms of territorial distribution um, I really have to so the idea of the map is also to have it like a territorial um, um, like identification right and so that I can so that we can see where those groups are based in, in that sense, I would like to ask maybe a question for everyone on if you think that this could also be a risk for the groups, uh, if they're identifiable, because um, I know that most of the groups that I'm researching, I'm going to research, I'm going to, I'm going to identify them through uh, information which is publicly available on the internet, but sometimes also through contacts, and sometimes it can be that the groups are, I don't know, they are really living under pressure because of some, I don't know, mining in, industry or some political tension in the regions. So I have to consider some small issues, um, but in general, I would like to have it, to have these groups identified in the mapping and also territory, like put in their territories where they are, both in Germany and in Brazil. 
And in Germany, I, I also don't have much of an idea of how many groups I could um, find out. I know that whenever I talk to the colleagues at the Institute, they say, well, there is a lot, like, and I already got quite a lot of uh, suggestions in terms of uh, stakeholders to talk to. And so I, it's, it, I think it will be quite many. And, um, um, but of, of course, I won't be able to, find, to identify all of which are working on it. Um, and was it, did you have any other question or? Yeah, it was more the idea of uh, numbers that you are expecting, and and when I said yeah, the distribution, I would exact. I was trying to say exactly that how they are distributed in uh, through the territory of Brazil in terms of geography. But yeah, I understood that you will. Uh, um, it's not known yet. It's an expectation. Yeah. But yeah, I think. Well, was... I think if I if I'm doing like a visual uh, map, I cannot. Be, I cannot include that many um, also, like, how do you say, like uh, that many information in it. So I would not include, I think, more than 20 for each country or, and, and then I could keep it as in, in another format where you can see that the, the full information may be um, not in a visual way, uh, but maybe just written. Um, yes, so I would not, be so, I would not have like that many, those many groups included in the visual approach or in the visual output. I saw Cecilia also, I don't know. Yes, please Cecilia. <laughs> Hi. Hi everyone. First of all, thank you Isadora so much for your presentation. I think since you restart your um, fellowship, I was really eager to know more about what you are doing. And uh, of course, sometimes there are so much on my plate that I don't manage to participate of everything, but uh, I wouldn't like uh, to miss your presentation, even if I was here <laughs> multitasking a little bit. And uh, my question uh, for you, it's uh, I'm curious because one thing that uh, called my attention in your project was exactly this gender take to yeah. climate change and environmental issues that uh, sometimes I see that is still very uh, rare to see. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious about the, which theoretical approach do you take? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, uh, I was on vacation, I just returning from vacation. My book for the vacation was a Po Preciado apartment on Uranus. Okay. And uh, it's a uh, he's a philosopher, French philosopher, Spanish. No, he's a Spanish, but uh, it's one of the persons that I know trying to take this uh, bridge between gender studies and the polit politics and the epistemology in mm -hmm. a broader sense. So I'm very curious to know about which uh, reference you are trying to bring up uh, to discuss these things uh, today. And then my second question, maybe it's about your then uh, uh, maybe uh, burning question or situation related to the groups, because you are indeed like a take many different groups. Yeah. Uh, and my question for you, what calls your attention of uh, why do you think that the different groups brings a uh, maybe common element mm -hmm. or a group of elements that could take our reflection of uh, uh, how they really change the, the, the way that we approach uh, environment or climate issues and uh, what are the varieties that you are really like trying to highlight mm -hmm. when you look at the specific groups and then maybe find the 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 common sense that they they bring up when mm -hmm. you talk about the participation and the change okay okay so i'm going to reply before and then um esther um okay um so first of all regarding the reference that i have in terms of um, gender gender studies or feminist theory theories i mean as much as uh, of course i am um I'm gonna like um, use uh, some theor theories to, um, um, to um, how do you say that? Um, for the background of my study. 
And also because I already also said that the intersectional approach um, is something that I that I use throughout my 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 um, work. I I also intend to have a very a more um, as I said a more empirical uh, like take this time, and uh, also by debating, for example, whenever groups talk about gender issues, what they what do they mean by that? By that. Um, there are some feminist groups, for example, working on just transition that I know as well. And so um, it will be also interesting to know what are the, 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 their takes on that. But um, so I would say that intersectionality is um, first and foremost my, um, my reference whenever I take a feminist approach, whenever I, I, I look at gender issues, because um, I cannot, like, uh, I cannot approach gender issues um, by only approaching it. Why, when I see that it's, a, it's, a, it's an aspect that is, um, uh, that is related to other aspects that put, for example, people in, um, in more or less, um, um, how do you say, unequal um, situations, I have to be very mindful that it's not only about gender. And therefore, whenever I talk about, like I started being a very, uh, um, a very enthusiast of, of gender issues in my trajectory. And by doing so and working with it, I've also be, came to realize that um, a more systemic uh, view and take on gender issues would be necessary for me to address the things that I was working on, like climate change, as I said, right? I could not only see it by like making the differentiation between men and women, men and women relations and the unequal inequalities between men and women. Um, and this is already a very binary, binary way of approaching gender, which um, many feminists nowadays are, um, are um, fighting against. And for example, and I also align myself with, uh, with feminist uh, scholars, which are much more, um, which are more talking about, um, uh, which have more like queer theories to it and bring more a non-binary uh, dimension whenever we we approach gender issues, um, and so um, and so there are some references. Like Kimberly Crenshaw is the one who who talks about intersectionality first and foremost, and um, Yuval Davis was also another one that I used um, in terms of of um, intersectional um, feminism. Um, I also. In my, in my studies, and I also think a lot about political ecology, I think I like uh, the, 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 the academics or I like the political ecology um, um, debate. And there are some feminists working on political ecology, like I think Rochelle was one, one of them. And also I can cite, I, I, I'm, I'm also very interested in, in um, yeah, in, in approaches uh, of political ecology, as I said, but from a feminist perspective. And so basically, I would say that intersectional feminism is uh, far and foremost where I, uh, like it's, it's really um, the one not only guiding my methodology, my, my views, but also the theory behind. Uh, and I would say queer feminism as, um, is something a, a bit more new for me, but and I think it can also benefit a lot my analysis in this in this research because, for example, when I when I look into um, the issue of work or how um, the communities uh, on the ground would be impacted, you you know when I don't know the the mining's would be closed in a certain territory, how this how this um, dynamics in the very lives of the families, but also of the communities working and de on or depending on that economy would change. Like there are so many people um, there, for example, a lot of, uh, uh, when, we, when we think about gender issues, um, many women are working on the, on the households. Um, there are also a lot of uh, issues regarding um, um, sexual exploitation in, in regions uh, uh, surrounding um, mining industries, and and so all those issues that I like that I can consider in my in my research, but 
uh, whenever the groups approach them, when the approach comes from the groups in terms of gender, I want to ask them, what do they mean by that? And why is that an important thing for them, right? Like, why are they approaching gender equality when, they want, when they're talking about uh, just transition? Um, is it because in their territories or in, the, in, the, in the, their context, the inequality is, is, is very visible or is it because of other issues? I don't know, maybe, um, yeah. So this is something that um, I, I hope I answered your, your first question. And the second question would be um, ah, how this, the different debates would be um, benefiting maybe our, our understanding of just transition, right? Okay. Um, ooh, I don't know. I don't know if my so I think this is something that's still in the air. Like uh, how what are the what are the the re what are the goals that I have after like uh, having this this um, uh, this information gathered and, and analyzed. Um, so first, I thought that I wanted to of, that I wanted this content to be useful for these groups working on just transition so that they know who are the fellow groups working on it and how maybe they could join forces or they could talk or they can really um, benefit from this exchange of information, right? Uh, so my, my, my main purpose is to really, so that these groups benefit from this information, which is more or less available, but not really compiled and not really like um, um, put together in the way that I will, that I plan to do. And the idea is not really to, to come up with a common understanding of just transition, but basically to really like um, bring this different, uh, uh, this diversity in, in the, in, into light. And, um, and I know that even within the civil society group, sometimes it's really hard that they come together because the interests can be very conflicting. Um, but I really hope that this can benefit them and also maybe some governments willing to um, willing to cooperate with um, the populations and the most marginalized groups because f f so basically when I take a just approach or a justice approach in my work and uh, also that's why I was interested in just transition I am interested in um, in a debate or in in a work that would finally ultimately benefit more those groups which are more which normally are left behind whenever those issues happen right whenever a, a transformations economic transformations happen so therefore i hope that this can benefit those groups um, in the end but not necessarily by um, by bringing one definition or by bringing one understanding of just transition i think it's there are still some questions i have to explore or things that i have to make more clear in my research on how this can be used or useful indeed yeah um and esther yeah thanks um first of all i think it's really cool that you do this because we are trying to build an energy justice indicator on how to measure energy justice and when we run into real problems of recognition justice on like so all the marginalized groups we don't have data on basically and you look at all of them so it's kind of cool um i'm just wondering i mean you partially answered one of the questions you had whether you want to look at the different definitions and make it like basically one big one with different kind of where, where people put importance let's say because you still could think all the groups have the same definition of energy justice right but for some it's more important that the local area is not clustered with any kind of windmills or whether other people decide um, look at mining. So I think that's like, I still would not rule it out that, that you get one definition of energy justice, but different kind of importance attached by the different groups. But for me, more important is like, how do you think you will do the online interviews? Will it be like a really structured guidance or will you just have this really open approach where people just like spill what they think is energy justice and you try to make sense of all the like many, many hours of interviews that you will gather? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you have thought about this. Yeah. yeah, I didn't talk a lot about my method, but um, so first I would like to, uh, after doing some research and um, snowball sampling through the contacts that I have, um, uh, and by already collecting some groups' names, um, the idea would be to do like an online survey 
and um, send them a really simple question about what they what is just transition for them, like asking if they, they work on just transition or energy transition, and then ask if they work on just transition, what, what is just transition for them? And so this would come in a, like in a survey. And from the survey, I would uh, take a few groups to interview. Um, it's not my intention to interview all of the groups, not at all. Um, I would, yeah, I would just take um, um, some representative let's say, uh, not representative, but I would try to make it um, to, to choose uh, based on the criteria of different territories or contexts within the countries, but also um, sectors, let's say, if I see um, groups, more grassroots groups, or let's say um, women's groups working on energy issues or um, trade unions. So I would like to have like a diverse um, sector represented uh, in this, interviews but i don't aim to have that to make that many because i already intend to have uh, some open questions answered through an online survey yes and for that i need to yeah i need to figure out um in the institute how i can operationalize um, all of that in terms of data protection because the 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 uh, the data that I would ask for the groups would be identifiable, of course. Um, but yeah, this is something I have to check later with my colleagues. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> yeah, data protection is a funny thing. You can always approach, of course, Annette or me to discuss this. Big, and you should take some time in advance to sort it out because it is complicated nowadays. Mm -hmm. And having said that, we are almost at 3 p.m. already. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to thank you very much again, Isadora, for your presentation and also for the very many thoughts actually you brought also up in the discussion how to approach this on the topics. And I would say if any one of you would like to follow up, Isadora is still with us for almost a year or so. And I think there are lots of connections also, for example, now the energy justice uh, indicator you've been thinking about, Esther. And Having said that, I wish you all a very good day and hope to see you hopefully physically or so very soon. Yes. See you. Okay, then. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the attention. Bye. Bye. Bye.